today we are on our way up to see Angel Wax. We are just crossing the Scottish border. We've just exited Carlisle services on the lovely M6. Um, one thing I've noticed of distinct is, is uh, very cold up here, very cold indeed. Uh, current temperature is one degrees, but that's a Scottish one degrees, which is for us soft English people, probably minus 10. Um, the idea of today is various different things. We've got two days up here and in the boot of the scoop I've got 25 waxes from the mega test. So the first order of business is going to be to take a wander around Angel Wax, have a look at their facilities. Uh, we've just come up from the NEC Classic Car Show uh, yesterday. It's been a very long weekend and uh, there we met John and Matt uh, and Lottie at Angel Wax uh, and forewarned them of our arrival in the morning and they seemed remarkably happy um, but anyway we're coming up we're gonna have a look around their facilities and then what I really want to do is uh, start testing on the waxes now if you remember the original mega test we went to auto glimpse labs and we tested uh, the uh, gloss adding ability the uh, uh, water behavior with a beadometer custom-made beadometer and we also tested the color shift that the waxes produced uh, then we put them all into a California sunshine machine, a weathering machine essentially. And uh, we left it there for three months. And the idea was that some of the waxes would degrade in UV light, some wouldn't. And as a consequence, we would be able to say definitively, this wax lasts better than that wax. There was a problem though. Every single wax was absolutely fine after three months. And that's supposed to simulate best part of a year's worth of UV. Uh, now that doesn't mean that all these waxes will last a year on your car because in a car they don't just have UV light, they have rain, they have wind, they have incorrect wash procedure, they have chemicals and fallout from all over the shop. Um, however, it did rather put a spanner in our works and I'm not talking about myself. So uh, what I want to do is what I'd politely call destructive testing. And I had a word with John Hogg, the chemist at Angel Wax. Um, and um, his eyes lit up when I started talking about destructive testing. Um, so we're going to be doing lots of fun little things. He's coming up with some ideas of how to test things. And we appreciate that Enigma, which is his own creation, is one of the waxes in the test. But we will be there to make sure that uh, it uh, gets equal treatment to all the other waxes. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the plan for the next couple of days. We'll also do a factory walk around. Uh, I want to do some interviews as well with Matt and John. Uh, they have been in the industry for quite a long time now and they've got lots of interesting opinions, uh, many of which I personally agree with, um, and lots of different takes on things. And from their angle, they are you know, a, a genuine manufacturer. They're based in Glasgow in Scotland. Oh, uh, Rosas, hang on, play it cool. And as a consequence, um, you know, they put a different perspective on things than others do. Anyhow, uh, we're gonna hoon on up. We've literally just passed the, the border now, or just about to. Um, doors are locked, so we should be fine and uh, we will catch up shortly. We're here with Matt of Angel Wax, who is the, are you the brain or the beauty of Angel Wax? I can't work it out. <laughs> Marketing director. That's the one, Marketing director, so, so neither. Um, <laughs> now, you were gonna kindly introduce us to John, because we, we haven't seen each other for literally ages. It's not like the classic car show was yesterday. Um, it was hmm. yesterday, wasn't it? It was yesterday. It yes, was yesterday, it was and yesterday. we've, we've hot-footed up here. Um, and so, yeah, we were gonna go and talk to John about some waxes and stuff. He may be in here, but, okay. but be quiet. No sudden movements. Okay. okay. Full there ninja mode, please, Matt. Other Matt. Shh. Okay. John! John! Well, things are on, so we'll... Ah, he could be on charge in his cupboard. Dr. Hogg! <laughs> ah. <laughs> we keep okay. him in here for everybody's safety. Ah, go on, Bennett. Come around here. Come around here. Hi, John. How are you doing? Hi, uh, Bert. How are you? It's all well. Suze, thanks. Are you literally in a, in a, in a cupboard with science -y things? I'm in a cupboard, locked in a cupboard. <laughs> Seldom allowed out. But yes, yes that's what I'm doing. Science -y things. And I have somewhere the cream I promised you. Ah, thank you. Yes. It's fine, but the rash has got much smaller. It's good. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's always best that way. Um, so we've come to bother you for two whole days. 
Two whole days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's because I'm not allowed back into England yet. Yeah, well, um, yeah, well crime report. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about waxes. And we had this great idea, didn't we, about... Yes, I. We were going to make a wax. We're going to do a limited edition pro detailer wax that is going to be made yes. right in front of our eyes and thus your eyes, um, courtesy of, of John and his great brain and chemistry knowledge. Yes. So the short film... <laughs> so what we're going to do that wasn't a planned gag by the way um, this is genuine laughter yeah, it's so, part of the moment it's part of the moment so what we're going to do is set up some chemistry kit and stuff like that and we're going to go start to finish so we're going to start with literally the raw ingredients go through the different types of waxes and, and mm -hmm. clever stuff you can go in there we're going to have a bit of play with some SIO2 yes, I believe yes we might have some we yes, might have yes. some of that um, and that. then we're going to cook it all up or we'll do whatever the magic we do the yes, fairy dust we'll, and all we'll the rest of it up, fairy dust yes but that's another story that is <laughs> And then we're going to go back to the other part of Angel Wax. Angel Wax is, is kind of basically like an empire here. It's a, it's a huge industrial unit, and this is just the, the chemistry lab part. Um, and we're going to go back problem. and bother Matt, who's the, you know, the clever designery sort of person, who's going to do us up some nice sort of labely things and, and packaging and talk to us about how Angel Wax sort of operates as a business. Sounds good. That's good. You sure so, you're up for so, that? Sounds all right to me, yeah. I just want to go and sit somewhere where it's nice and warm. Yes, it is quite cold here. Explaining <laughs> to that Scottish people get cold too. It's great. <laughs> cool. Marlowe, don't recover. Yes, yes, come forth, come yeah. forth. Brilliant. Just thought that. Okay, okay, okay. No um, more than 10 minutes, no excitement. Right. Okay, just keep everything to keep, keep calm. calm. Keep calm. Yeah. Hey, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Right. He's Sounds it good. can be unpredictable. Yeah, I signed all the paperwork. It should be right. Okay. Okay. So, John, today you very kindly said yeah. that you're going to help us build a uh -huh. custom wax for Pro Detail. Pro Detailer wax, yes. Brilliant. Well, so how are we going to go about this? First thing I need is some solvent, which be over here. Ooh, solvent. That sounds fun. Yeah, some carrier solvent. So, are there lots of different types of carrier solvents around? There are several different types. You have limonene-based. You have slow hydrocarbons, fast hydrocarbons. Medium speed hydrocarbons. And limonene is, is something used quite a lot in car care products. It's used an awful lot in car care products. Absolutely. This so is a standard hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon. And I'm guessing that's highly toxic, is it? Or? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Not no. No, I'm all right for now. <laughs> and so you're weighing in. You've got here a recipe by the looks of I it. I have a formulation sheet. A formulation sheet, not a recipe. So now we move on to the solid waxes. Ooh, now this looks fun. We've got lots of little bits and bobs in here. Yes, the waxes. Four waxes that we use. Ooh, what's these. this one? That is pharmaceutical grade T1 Carnova wax. So this is the wax that everybody gets excited about, and I'm yeah. going to show Matt on his other camera here if he can do it. This stuff, this is very fine. I've seen it before in like a kind of a, a, a uh, heavy texture. The more processed it becomes, the more powder effect, the finer it becomes. Yeah, I can definitely feel just a little bit just in the So the so. T4 is granular. Gotcha. And how much does this cost a kilogram then? That is about £24 a kilo. Oh, so it's not ruinous. And a kilo will go a long way. A kilo goes an awful long way. Cool. So we'll uh, Start introduce with the Carnoba. So again, precision is name of the game. Precision when it comes to the actual wax component is more crucial. So how, how much total weight of wax are we making today? We are making two kilos. Two kilos we'll of wax. 50 kilos. So in two kilos, that's 2,000 grams. Yes. We put in about 85 grams worth of Carnuba. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and what's, what's this wax? Oh, this, this is, is a special wax. This is my own special. That's your own special, special my brew? My own special brew, Did yes. that come out of an orifice? Well, it certainly came out of something resembling one. Okay. Well, that's good to know. It came out of something resembling an orifice. We'll have a bit. 100 grams of this. 100 grams of this. Ooh, we've been extra generous, we've got an extra gram of... 101 gram of it. John's special secretion. We have here... Ooh, can I have a, can I have a play? Beeswax. Beeswax. Pharmaceutical grade beeswax. And it's been made with real bees? Made with real bees. Cool. So about 150 we... grams of this. 150, so lots of beeswax. So this will give you a glossy wax. So in terms of the different properties, Carnuba is, if I remember right, it's the sort of adds durability and kind of hardness and that sort of yes. thing. The, what, your special secretion adds sort of workability? It gives the ability to buff it off. Okay. That's what so that's enables the, it. The flare kind of period. To come, come off. Gotcha. And then the other one, what, we, what was the other one? I can't remember. We've done... We've done bees, which is gloss. Carnauba, which is hardness. Yep. My special one, which allows the flare. wax to come off. Yep. And this fourth one is another special. It's another this special. This is an extremely special one. This is special. When we say special, what we're really meaning is secret. 
Um, yes. It is a secret ingredient. And so it's good to know that secret ingredients in there. We just can't tell you what it is um, nope. because otherwise John will go to prison. Yes, and I haven't got enough of said secret ingredient. We don't have enough of it. Basically, <laughs> it is. I mean, I'll let you into some small basics. We, we actually use human skeletal remains and carve them up and put them in there. That could be it. That, that could, could be do it. it. He's got a big tin of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have about 200 grams, grams of the other boats. 206 grams. grams. So extra skeleton. So And that adds what? Sorry, what's this? That add? adds durability. Durability, okay. But the four natural waxes. Gotcha. This one's a durability adder. This is a this is a wax that gives ours a twist, makes ours slightly different from everybody else's. Brilliant. And we can determine which particular colour you fancy going for. Well, what yeah. have you got? Oh, I can see something bluey, purpley. Here. We have two different styles of coloration here. You have the dye, which Bert's picked up and got over his fingers. I've got but my fingers. Yeah, is this the stuff that's never going to come out? I'll just show the dye here. Basically, yes, it's not coming out. No hurry. Oh, well, that's all right. It's not actually like toxic when I suck my fingers. Not too toxic. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So that's a really nice kind of rolly, bluey, purpley colour. Yes. You'll put that in at about 0.1, 0.2%. Okay, so we're talking literally one or two grams for yes, the two kilos then. That's correct. Yeah. And then you have these steel. Of this sort of steel. Greens. Light pink. God. They are solid. And, and this melts down when you and cook these the wax. Melt I guess. Down when you cook the wax, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. What, what other colour have we got here? Oh, We've that's a nice purple. That's a nice that's purple. A nice pinky purple, I think. That's the desirable. That's colour. desirable wax. Well, so you could have that. Why yeah. don't we use this? No problem. That would be nice. Okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, what do we do? We just bung a bit in, or basically, yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we've moved down to the hot plate here, and I can see you're mixing your your paint in of wax. Yes, I'm. I'm stirring. Stirring. I'm stirring. And the what? next step, I'm guessing, is going to be to put some smell in it. Fragrance, yes. Fragrance. I, I, get, I called it scent and I got lambasted earlier. Yes. Um, and what's really interesting is I presume that whatever smell you put in made absolutely no difference to the wax itself. But then um, the evil genius yes. here... Some fragrances make uh, a vast difference to the wax to do with the, gray, the degree of oiliness. Some will evaporate quickly, dry the wax out. Some evaporate quickly and dry the wax out on the car, making application and removal difficult. So the, there is a science and a, a trick in picking the correct fragrance. And the one you've picked today, cinnamon, mm -hmm. works a treat. So how much are you going to put in? Uh, I measured them out. About that much. About that much. You see, it's, it's good that. Well, just and that's, oh, God, I, can, feel, I can smell that from here. You feel the wax, you know, you know from experience how much to put in. I was talking to John earlier about this and uh, I was saying, you know, what about all the science and all the chemistry and, and how you know, clever do you need to be? Uh, and he said, well, actually, it's more instinctual. He just dips his finger in and has a bit of a, a feel. Have a bit of a play. And then once I've done that, I go at the wax. There's a wonderful mix, I noticed, of the kind of the art side of this kind of touchy feely side, yeah. so to speak. And um, in John's sort of second office there, which is marginally larger than his other one. Cupboard, yes. He's got a, he's got a computer. And all sorts of other things. Yes. Uh, was it a centrifuge in there that I saw? Well, yes. No, no, it was a printer. Oh, yeah, no, printer. And um, it had all sorts of tables and stuff of the tables, different blends that have worked in the past. Everything that I've tried, the results of which, you know, lead you on to the next next stage. Next yeah. And what I liked is method. when we were over at Autoglim, um, they do exactly the same in that they've got a filing cabinet full of sort of numbers yes. and letters that nobody can understand. And John has got some drawers which are full of oh. papers that he showed me, knowing full well that no other human being <laughs> can, could, read them. <laughs> can read them. So that works really nicely. So anyway, we've done the smell. Yes, the smell's in. The wax is made. I'll it's tell you what, what's really trendy at the moment is silicon dioxide, S SiO2 yes. in well, waxes. We have. Can we just put a label on, say, SiO2? It's much better to put some in and oh, okay. then put the label on. Okay. But, you know, you can do Some people allegedly do. Okay. Uh, we have three different styles of TiO2. And a phone. It's a working environment, it's as you can tell. It's a working environment, yes. We have powder, powder. SiO2. So this stuff is... Lighter it's, than air. Th it's bizarre, this. It's really It kind of feels like flour. But odd, I'm just going to try and work out, and it reduces the friction. And it this reminds me, yeah. you know what this reminds me of is, used to work in IT, can you tell? 
and um, essentially when you had a Cat5 cable or a Cat6 cable, um, there was sort of between the different twisted pairs, there was a kind of a, a powdery dust yes. thing. And this feels exactly, it's and smells similar. the same. Yes, it's a coated SiO2 okay. used to impart a bit of slip and a bit of body. Gotcha, so it's almost like a thickener in a way, is it? Thickener, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, it's a thicker it's, it's a setup. It just generates a bit more of structure. It's a structuring gotcha. agent. And I'm guessing that's really expensive stuff? No, this one is about eight pounds a kilo. Eight pounds a kilo. And the, a kilo, I think, will kilo physically be big. Yeah, uh, about 25 litres, you know, it's not, yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't weigh much. It yeah. doesn't weigh much. We have... It's not toxic, is it? No. Good, good. It's definitely not toxic. We have this style, which is a reactive brew, and this basically reacts with the waxes and gives you, again, a ceramic hybrid, for want of a better description. Mm -hmm. This one will be because we're going to use this one in the Pro Detailer wax. Oh, cool. And this will make it unique because it's not used... That's it, why you're holding the label around. And that's why the, <laughs> the bit that says what it is, yes. you can't see. But we don't use this one. So this one will come in at about 100, 120 pound a kilo. So considerably more. Yes. Um, and given that that's a liquid, it's going to be much denser. So yes, at least compact. Work work. Yeah. And then you have the Enigma ceramic. And that comes in at about 1,000 pound a kilo. So when he says the Enigma, it, there is a wax and, and in fact a kind of a growing product line I've noticed product in, saying. in the famous QED wax, uh, which has won lots of awards on yes. the weekly car magazine. Um, the, uh, that, there's Enigma version of that and the Enigma wax that we had in the mega test, and that's done exceptionally well. Yes, it does work well. And so just to sort of paraphrase what you're doing is um, with this SiO2, this, this powdery stuff, it's cheap, it doesn't really do much, it doesn't bond clamp chemically with no. the wax, but you can put a sticker on saying it's got SiO2 so in. It, yeah. So winner, winner, chicken you're, dinner. You're, you're, not, you're not lying to the public. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a start. Um, and then there are actually two other types, and so that's seven quid a kilo, and that one is a thousand pounds a kilo. And I've seen, you know, John literally pockets this stuff every day. Yes, that's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one we're putting in is kind of the proper type, and it will bond probably with the wax, yes, but it is noticeably older. cheaper because we're noticeably cheaper. Yes. So I that's cool. Seems a reasonable Yes, seems a reasonable assessment, yeah. So we'll put this in at about 2%. Okay. So we'll stir it up, and that's it. You've made a wax? That's the wax made. And what temperature were you cooking it at? Yeah, about 5 of the gas mark variety. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So that's kind of what we do. That's cool. And then uh, I'm guessing there's a sort of a pouring element to it? Yeah, there will be. Uh, we'll take it, we'll filter it, mm -hmm. pour it, and then we'll kind of uh, basically decant it into containers. Gotcha. And what's, what's the time scales on that one? I mean, we're, we're uh, only here for a little time. Are well, we but that no, 10 minutes, yeah. 10 minutes? That would be fine. That'd be cool. So what we're going to do is say goodbye for now. Excellent. And we're going to go and hunt around the rest of the Angel Wax Empire. And, and then we'll in maybe back. a little bit more than 10 minutes, we'll come back and set up our ding-dongs around the place and, and film you decanting your thingy. No problem. Marvellous. Thank you very um, much. No problem. So we're here at Angel Wax in the Angel Wax showroom uh, with young Matt Yates, um, who uh, reliably informs me is 29 years old. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, I just wanted to talk really about the Angel Wax business because it's fascinating. We've got, you've been around for how long now? We started developing about 2007, but went limited in 2010. So we have been working behind the scenes before we even went limited. Um, and since then, since 2010, the last seven years, we've just continued to develop. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of like non-stop. Even though I want it to stop, the <laughs> chemist just keeps developing. This so, would be Dr. Hogg. Yes. So yes. I just have to keep producing labels and writing about the products. But the, um, the, thing, the thing with what we're doing is there's so many new... Um, innovations coming into the industry for raw materials. Um, a lot of the materials we're pulling in aren't even f designed for this kind of industry. They come from the printing and packaging industry mm -hmm. and um, the tech is moving forward so quickly. We're finding products that can be incorporated into today's detailing products that make them head and shoulders really technologically above. So the whole um, idea is bringing in the, the yeah. tech from different parts of the chemical industry, the yeah. wider chemical industry, yeah. Um, which you guys got a background experience in the wider chemical industry. Yeah, you? I mean, I met the, um, this is where people start to cry when they watch this. Um, I met John when I was 17 and I'm now shared over 29. I'm mm -hmm. 45. So I've known John a few years. Yeah. Uh, we worked together back was in the day. Was he your teacher or your, your grandfather? Or? I'll not say he groomed me. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. No, I won't say that. Um, 
I was the lab technician, and he just graduated from uh, from from uni, and he was okay. um, he was a chemist at the the company I was working for. I see. So, so you got a chemistry background as well? Hell no. What lab, lab were you in? Lab technician. What sort so, of lab? A chemical lab. Okay. I don't have any chemical qualifications like John does, but, but I've been in the industry for years. I I know what they're talking about. You're cleaning um, their tubes and doing sort of generic stuff. Yes, yeah. some of that. Filling up the Winchester bottles. Doing that kind of stuff. Following him around while he set fire to himself. <laughs> and he did. Um, Seriously? He, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, okay. In a mix. So first John ever Hogg experience has, has with John Hogg yeah. was he, he torched a bucket of a really nasty solvent with a mixing head in it that was sparking like crazy. I stood back. It boomed. It flashed. And his eyebrows went. And then I ran outside, past the fire extinguishers. <laughs> I didn't know where they were. So he kind of put it under control. But mm. yeah, I always kept a distance after so that. So he's kind of in your heart, really, in that way. Oh, you've no idea. <laughs> so uh, you've got your favourite waxes. You've got, obviously, the Enigma kind of feeling in the range and stuff. Mm-hmm. As an industry, where do you feel that it's going? <sighs> I mean, currently, the, obviously, there's the, there's the enthusiast market is growing. Yeah. Um, then you've got the retail market, um, and then you've got professional application market. Where, where do you feel your strongest, or really want to build in? Yeah, we, we like connecting with um, with, the, with the man in the street that likes to look after his car, and we like to give them products that have excellent value for money. Uh, for example, if um, the Enigma Wax was uh, owned, or a huge brand had it, um, an expensive brand, for example. Um, I do feel that there will be more another zero on the end of the 180 pound price mm-hmm. mark but price point we like to um, to connect with the the guy in the street the guys that walk into this store um, the guys that order online and they order on a daily basis and they you know they, they get a lot of products they order on a daily basis I mean do you think they might be having a bit of a problem I mean, <laughs> not the same people. Not the same. All just checking. People, I was about yes. to say, just suggest at the end of the week doing order, yeah. and then at least on postage. But though, what so. we've done with the with the website is we've opened it up to three different levels. So the the resellers order on there, the the traders and the guy in the street. So everybody can order. The traders order in five litre gall- you know, five mm. litre quantities, and uh, and everybody can afford our products because they don't break the bank. So you do do bulk things. I mean, the five litre gallon. I've never heard of that before. Five litre gallon. A five litre yes. gallon. It's, it's we do, a we, do a U- we do US gallons for overseas uh, mm-hmm. for all our export shipping and we do five litres for uh, for people in the UK. And is that all products? I mean obviously not waxes but for all, all products? All, yeah, every different. single liquid product that we do can be ordered in any size. Mm-hmm. If people need more than five litres or a US gallon mm-hmm. then they can get 25s, 205s, 1000 litres. You can send them an IBC if they want to. Send them an IBC. Yes. That's the beauty of being a manufacturer which we are a dying breed. Mm. Uh, well, this is one thing. I mean, we have gone around various other places and the number of brands that actually, because it's what I distinguish between a manufacturer and a brand. Mm. You know, a brand is somebody who's done the marketing. They've done what you've done, the clever bit, mm-hmm. um, in terms of the kind of the, the flashy website, the nice labels and all the rest of it. Um, but it's the manufacturer who does all the science behind it. And as you say, they're very much a dying breed. Um, mm. And you now get these sort of centralized hubs where you've got one manufacturer who makes 10, 15 brands. Different smells, different colours. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And then everybody just, all the little guys that want their own brand, that that's their dream of having their own brand, mm. we are somewhere where they can go and get what 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 they want. I and mean, do you do OEM services for brands or? Um, we've been known to do one or two. But anyway, so I'm really enjoying this um, and talking to this. Oh, hello, hello. Good afternoon, chaps. <laughs> Mr. I recognise that face. Mr. Ewing from Dirty Cars. Hello, sir. How are you? How are we doing? Oh, that's pretty How are we? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> what are you in for? More stuff? Yes. He likes to, he likes to take our stock. Does he? Mm. Does he give you like magic beans in return? Sometimes. Well, he doesn't get cash. <laughs> what, we, 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 we had one or two groats on occasions. Other times we've had hoovers and washies and many other different things. Oh, groats. Yes, sorry, yes. I misheard yes. you yes. actually. We'll have to oh, sorry. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Paul is a PBD member and um, we've known each other for a good couple of years but never actually met. Yes, this is the first time we've met. Yeah, and um, Paul is notorious within the PBD group for having the biggest van in the world. He has a Sprinter long wheelbase, high Q, massive great thing, which is essentially the size of a of a boat or a house. Um, and you do a lot of the testing for Angel Wax. Yes, I uh, usually test waxes and such like that Uncle John comes up with. Um, <laughs> See, so, so for you he's uncle, for me he's doctor. You call him what you want. You know. <laughs> he's often referred to as Doc from Back to the Future. Yes, I can see the likeness. You know. Doc was a bit taller, wasn't he? Yeah, but, you know, he refers to me as Joel Brenner. <laughs> 
That's a stretch. <laughs> Cool. And so what is your favourite Angel Wax product then while you're here? Well, generally, I, I get quite a few that I like, particularly so, and I know that, I don't know if this has been mentioned before, but formulation number one, entry-level wax from uh, Angel Wax, fantastic product. In fact, I was using this today on a, a Volkswagen Beetle. Easy on, easy off, minutes, gives great gloss, and will last what, four months easy, I would say. Mm -hmm. Certainly in from what I'm using. So yeah, no, this is great stuff. Um, I think we need to go and uh, go and see how John is doing okay. because he is curing our special wax for us. Do you want to have a look at our special yeah, wax? Yeah, I've heard the rumour that he's, uh, he's making a, a pro detail of yeah, wax. Yeah, the, the music is blaring and he's, he's absolutely on it. And he said he's going to be curing and come and see us in 10 minutes or so. And it's been about 25 minutes. So we Fantastic. hopefully better go and rescue him. So John, um, we've been in and around and we've gone yes. adventuring and, I, and um, we're back and you're ready. And the wax is ready. It's all set. And can I touch how, yeah, how warm yeah. is that going to be? Oh, it's pleasantly warm. It's not bad. I, again, it is really, really cold no, here. Cold so any here. source of warmth, I can is see it, why. Yeah, you would like to keep your hands on something that's warm. I've been told that you can find John here sometimes on cold nights, just holding just his holding wax. things. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So the important thing with the wax now is you filter it. Okay. Because you have to filter it to make sure that there's no bits in it. So basically, it's it's being poured through a filter. Yeah, essentially. But you'll see that even the unfiltered product. It's pretty smooth. It's pretty smooth. Yeah. And there's not much bits in it. And that's why it's not crucial for the, the temperature, because once it's melted, that's it's melted, you're not dissolving it. But you can't denature it, can you, by going too hot? You can burn some of the organics if you go too hot. You have to go really too hot. Right. But at the moment... Because there's too hot, and then there's really too hot. Really too hot. We would then take the filtered material and pour it... Into, into your teapot. My, into my uh, coffee pot. This is Japanese coffee pot. Mm-hmm with a special spout. Which I imagine conducts the heat so it stays it the right the temperature all the way. It stays all the way. So there is a purpose to your madness? There is a purpose to it, yes. I like to have my spout well polished so I don't have any drips. Okay. It's always best not when I find. You heard it here first. Yeah, definitely. Keep your spout polished, That's avoid drippage. And you're pouring all in one by the looks of it? Or would you do no, that if it was I a bigger would, wax? If it was a bigger wax, you'd pour it uh, in stages. This because it's a smaller wax and there's not so much depth. Mm -hmm. You pour 80% and then do a 20% top up. Gotcha. And the top up enables you to have, you know, it, it improves the, it improves the wax, but it aesthetically it looks really nice because you get a really mm, smooth top. Yeah. And so that's the one thing with Angel Wax is, and with a lot of other people like Dodo Juice and stuff like that, yeah. the waxes are made in batches, small batches, um, which allow each you know batch to be tested individually. And they are really very much handmade. As you can see yeah. here, John's hands are... are this know, is how it's done. Out. Uh, we make 50, cu 50 tub batches. And that's 50 to 50 mil tub yeah, batches? Yeah, a throw. That's the most yeah. we make. A lot of the time, it's 10 tub batches. Gotcha. So every Angel Wax wax that you out have there. get or used has been touched by this man? Yes, it's, yes I've, I have, I have it's handled ha it. It's been handled by Dr. Hogg? Yes. Thank you for watching part one. We have just left John as he poured the wax and we're waiting for it to cure. And now we're back down in Sirencester at our HQ a couple of weeks later. And in the meantime, John has organized the labels to be designed and printed with their man, Jamie, and uh, he's sent it all down. And here is the finished item. We have 50 of these and you will be able to win one if you like. Um, we are making lots of competitions all the way up to wax stock this year, 2018. Um, so all you need to do is follow our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube video and we'll be posting up all sorts of exciting ways and competitions for that. Thank you for watching part one of our car care adventure up to Angel Wax in Renfrew in Scotland. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, click here. And if you'd like to watch part two, click here.